nomenclature. UDR, MDR, and XDR. Useful bits of shorthand to know. So let's take them and break them apart. It's helpful to think about bacterial resistance as having three categories. So the two that are most commonly used are MDR and XDR, pretty obvious. Multi-drug resistant, extreme drug resistance. The third category is what you have when it's not the first two, usual drug resistance. And the, the idea here is simple. All bacteria are resistant to something, but when the resistance is the expected form of resistance for which we have available good drugs, you know, you, you can plan for it. You know what it means. And the, this, this spectrum, UDR to MDR to XDR, has important implications when you're doing clinical trial design. If you're going to bring in a, a new drug that you're going to test, you need to test, test a new drug against some old drug in a comparative study. And there's a, a whole YouTube lecture on the question of how you design those studies, non-inferiority and superiority studies. But the, the thing you're most often going to want to do is a non-inferiority study of your new drug versus an old drug. And the easiest place to do that is in the UDR setting. Because the usual drug resistance is what most people have. So most of the people who have the infection you want to study can be treated either with your the comparator, because it's usual drug resistance, the comparator works, or with your new agent. And so it makes it straightforward to design a clinical trial. It's harder to do a clinical trial in which you want to study is only the MDR, the XDR pathogens. And so that's part of the reason that the shorthand nomenclature is helpful. Is it sort of gives you a, a feel for the, the, the incremental difficulty of studying the, the compound. And it's helpful to realize this is a spectrum. Uh, bacteria can move up and down across the spectrum. So, uh, you know, Staph aureus has at times gone from was what we call UDR, and then when MRSA emerged, then that was MDR, XDR, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and then when we developed vancomycin and subsequently other drugs, it went back to kind of being U, UDR. And right now you have to say that Staph aureus is really in a UDR setting. Most of the time we actually have a drug for you. It'd be rare to not be able to treat a, a, a Staph aureus infection with some drug. Um, and another part of this nomenclature thing is to realize that it's all about resistance to the other drug. It's not about resistance to my new drug. It's about resistance to the other drug. And this has an important implication for why it is that non-inferiority studies tell us something useful. So in a non-inferiority study, we'll compare a new drug with an old drug in a UDR setting. Some people will often come along and say, that's nice. You've shown me that the drug works, that your new drug works as well as an older drug in the setting where the older drug worked. So UDR setting, the older drug worked, your new drug matched that. Good. Tell me about resistant bacteria. Well, this is where Knowing a little bit about microbiology and pharmacology gives you the answer. The resistance is in the comparator side. It's not in the new drug. So the, the idea that your, your new drug will continue to work as expected as, as long as the pathogen is susceptible to your new agent. What happens on the resistant side doesn't really matter. If the pathogen becomes more resistant to other drugs, well, your drug should, in theory, if you've chosen it well, not lose its punch just because the other drugs have collapsed. And th and that's this, th that tells us a lot then about why a non-inferiority study is instructive. This is an idea that's been confusing to people, but the bottom line is that once you've done a good clinical trial, you know that the new drug works when the pathogen is susceptible to the new drug. And what happens with the, the other comparator agents kind of doesn't matter after you've done the clinical trial. There is a, a fourth category that we also use at times that tells you something about the quality of the drug and how easy it is to use it. And that, that acronym is DTR for difficult to treat resistance. And I'll point out that it actually, you might like to have that be DTTR, difficult to treat resistance, but we actually shorten it to DTR so it matches everything else. And DTR speaks to the notion that not all antibiotics are created equal in the sense of how easy they are to use. Some antibiotics have a lot of side effects. Some antibiotics are only available IV. And difficult to treat resistance would be the circumstance where it's resistant, you still have drugs, but you don't like those drugs a lot. They can only be given by vein or they have toxicities. And the, there's obviously an opposite to it. Still, we call it easy to treat resistance. We don't actually have an acronym for that. But when things are easy to treat, we're in the happy place. When things become more difficult to treat, they're more difficult to treat. And you actually outcomes are worse with the difficult if, uh, to treat 
different pathogens because the drugs themselves are toxic. So there you have it. You've got a series of acronyms. DTR, which has to do with the quality of the drugs. It's easy to use the drug, whatever drugs are work, we're not. And then we have UDR, MDR, and XDR, which are different levels along the continuum of resistance. And as things become more resistant, it's harder to do a clinical study uh, because it's harder to choose a comparator. Also because we try to make MDR and XDR pathogens right. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.